on this week's episode, we talk about Rust's armor trial, and we talk about the Oxford High School Shooters trial. We talk about the new upcoming Summer Olympic U.S. team uniforms. They're not going to be a big. You're not going to be a big fan. We talk about uh, former chiropractor sex capades, and you're not going to see how that story ends. When you go to the movie theater, do you ever get just annoyed about how big the cups are? Well, uh, some people have had enough and are suing for they're not being big enough. Um, there's a new drug-resistant bacteria out in space. I'm terrified. Um, two women pull an actual weekend at Bernie's. That's pretty crazy. And then in this week's Am I the Asshole, how far would you go to protect your friend? I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. I'm on it. Hey, freak yo, you're going nowhere. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Welcome back, kids and coaches, to another episode of West of Nowhere. I am Levi. And I'm Shane. And he is not in his normal setting, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you might notice a little bit of a difference, but... Yeah, I'm live from an igloo. Yeah, luckily, uh, <laughs> he brought his equipment so he can still, you know, do the normal thing. It doesn't sound like he's in a tunnel or in another room. Yeah, well, I'd hate for you guys to fucking complain about the sound not being great. <laughs> the free podcast we put out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess sometimes it's people that pay that get mad, but also, you don't have to give us that money. I mean, we appreciate it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> also, we got a lot of comments, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna get yeah. right into it. So Go we can, for it. Uh, t Ferg starting us off hot, says, OJ was guilty. There's no doubt in my mind. Agreed? I agree. Uh, apparently there's a conspiracy theory going around that his son helped him somehow. And yeah. I, I like, didn't did look into it, but it, Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh T Ferg also says Catholic priests do take a vow of celibacy, as do monks and nuns. There are monks and nuns in other religions as well who take vows of celibacy, including Buddhists in many of the different sects. Yeah. yeah. And I knew so, I knew the Buddhist thing, but I wasn't for sure if it was still like in the new age where they were like still making them do that. Yeah, uh, I knew Catholicism was like that, but yeah, I was I'm pretty sure that Christians aren't like that. That's yeah, not a thing. Like they have wives like, and kids and shit. Right. Yeah, because I've met pastors yeah. who have yeah, wives yeah. and stuff. There's a really cool youth pastor in my hometown who his wife was hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And it was crazy because, like, one day, I don't even remember how we were talk, like, how the conversation ended up in this way, but he's like, you know, before you get married, can't do anything. After you get married, it's all wide open. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Tell us. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, um, T for continues. Ragnar is the best boy. You should try to do an opening where you're both replaced by your dogs. Uh, I, there's so no I, fucking way Ragnar dude, can sit long enough for I that. Think, I think I could get Bo to sit still I couldn't enough. get him on the chair, like, in the camera. I'd have to Photoshop him in. So I think, you, I think what you do is you just take a picture with him sitting. Yeah. Like, remember how, like, for the longest time your background was him just, like, on the bed? Yeah. I think you just get a picture. We just get him pictures of them sitting in our chairs. Yeah. And we start the show with them like that. We could try it. I'll, I'll give it a I, shot. Because, like, Over the I think next you're right. Week, I'll I think try it. I think if it was live, he would destroy my shit. Yeah, Ragnar would jump onto the <laughs> onto the desk, and, <laughs> yeah. and it no, like not like he's meaning to, but he just is a curious fella, and he does not control his body well. He's very, <laughs> uh, what do they call it when you're when you trip a lot? He's a klutz. He's klutz. Yeah, clumsy? he's a klutz. Yeah, he's clumsy as fuck, dude. Uh, and then he said, please note, I wrote my last comment before you said, you're not Animal Planet, and now I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kylie said, no, I agree with this. Have them sitting there with the voiceover of the intro. That would be that would be pretty funny, just a, a still image as one of the intros is going. 
Uh, we'll work on it. We'll see what happens. And T. Ferg says, I don't hate it seems to be a I like it slang similar to sick, ill, etc. And if you wanted to know what decade T. Ferg f- grew up in, <laughs> 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 it's definitely the 90s. <laughs> it's sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard ill in a long time. Uh, but I think we should bring it back. And he says, Shane, you look much less tired this episode compared to last episode. So, I don't know what your fascination with me with my like sleep schedule is, but I'm I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> I'm so glad you're feeling well rested. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's just looking out for you, buddy. Yeah. He said he goes on. Uh, the conjoined twins remind me of the character with two heads from Monsters University, where one is in to interpretive dance and the other is not. They were also considered one individual for the scare games. That's a good point. That's, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, he says, my five-year-old son did, has decided to meditate in the middle of a soccer match. He said afterwards <laughs> he was envisioning himself kicking the ball well. That's awesome. Maybe do it a little bit before the game. I don't know. But, yeah. hey, that would be the next J.J. McCarthy because I don't know if you watched any Michigan football games this year, but every fucking time they would, at some point during the game, obviously because they won all of them, so they're yeah. not going to not do this, but every single game they would talk about how before the games, J.J. McCarthy goes out and meditates against the goalpost. And they're like making it, it, like making it seem more than it is. Like a lot of yeah, players yeah. meditate. He's not new. Like it's not, it's not some fantastic thing that. Oh shit! Did you guys know we could just fucking calm, chill, think about the game before it happens and ease your mind? Yeah, man. Fucking people been doing it for thousands of years, but goddamn, JJ McCarthy does it, and that's the fucking it's the well, newest from now thing. On. From now on, before cornhole tournaments, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go sit in the middle of the cornhole court and just like meditate. Yeah, sit in front of a corn, cornhole board and yeah. just, you know, fucking get real into it. Envision uh, myself making the shot. Yeah, exactly. Be the cornhole board. Uh, as T. Ferg says, Thor: Love and Thunder is an underrated film. It was weaker than Thor: Ragnarok, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, every fucking film is weaker than Thor Ragnarok. That's, yeah, I think that a lot of people saw the difference and immediately were like, oh, sorry, this is just the worst thing ever when they're comparing it to the greatest Thor movie that there has been and probably will be. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, oh, okay, well, it just fucking sucks. And it's like, <laughs> eh, okay, I guess, like, if that's what you think, but I don't. Also, hard for me to hate it when they have Guns N' Roses at the very beginning. Like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, I have to love this movie now. Sorry. Um, God, t has got a lot of comments here. He says, it doesn't surprise me that so many stared in- right into the e- eclipse. I think I saw a thing going around that was supposed to be satire. At least I hope it was that you're letting the liberal media win if you look at the sun with glasses. Um, you know, it probably was satire, but here's the fun part. That doesn't matter anymore. People will just see satire and immediately go, they're fucking right, dude. The liberal media is always telling me to look at the sun with sunglasses on. Fuck those guys, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, he said, my favorite apocalypse prediction was on my 16th birthday. The FLDS church said that Jesus was coming back on April 6th, 2005. Happy late birthday. Uh, they were rushed at- rushing to build their temple at the time but they were not able to finish at the time they wanted a few months later uh their le- leader horn jess was arrested oh yeah that dude uh heck yeah that, that was that one dude who had like girls in a bunker and shit didn't he i don't know i, I don't I, can't, I don't even know i don't recognize the Warren name. jeff's definitely was he was definitely molesting children i know that but it was like he had they had, like, a compound. Maybe it wasn't a bunker. It was a compound. And I remember seeing, like, the helicopter footage of them, like, taking the girls. And they're, like, young as, like, just 10-year-old, probably, as yeah. some of them. God. And they're in, like, the full Mormon, like, 
early traditional garb like they look like they might as well be amish and they're like yeah. leading them to like the fbi cars or whatever the fuck i remember seeing that and then yeah anyway horn jess big piece of shit um yeah yeah <laughs> pantera girl back she says uh the art exhibit conversation was hilarious but just know that there really are sperm artist art exhibits that have already been done shit damn it well <laughs> You know, a sperm art exhibit is like one of those rare art exhibits where you can look at it and go, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little uh, little play on uh, my episode of Remedial Scholar a couple weeks ago. Fucking yeah. Nailed it. And then it said, look, Shane's hair looks nice this week and no hat. Look at you. Two weeks in a row. Do my, like my, I, I went back and looked at the video. My hair, I don't, was, I, like I didn't, I, I didn't do anything to my hair. I just like didn't have a hat on. Yeah, I think that was <laughs> it. Yeah, like I think she was just saying your hair looks nice and you don't have a hat. But really, she meant you don't have a hat, so I could see how nice your hair looks. But it's fine. Uh, okay. Well, I, she, I wear a hat to hide my big ass forehead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, <laughs> she also says, um, "Dino nuggies are awesome at any age." Okay, agreed. But I just. Hard- Heart that no. comment. I yep. just don't. They're not. They're. They don't. They definitely don't taste better. They I don't taste they better, taste but worse. it's hot, fun. Hot take. They taste worse. All right. Do they? I think they do. I don't know. Any kind of nugget you get from the freezer section of a grocery store sucks. So it's not like you're you're already not doing well in life where you're. That's your decision making. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says. Still remember watching the OJ verdict in class in seventh grade and everyone being like, "What?" Um, there's like Wait. five A's, so that's how I assume it was pronounced. But anyway, um, who watched said, that in the seventh grade? Pantera, Pantera girl? girl, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah. Damn. When it came back, not guilty. Like seventh graders knew he did it. Yeah, I mean, turns out if you were around when the evidence was presented, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. It's just they were very manipulative in that trial. The his defense team, and he had like fourteen lawyers. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, and she said, wow, that would be an epic funeral procession. I don't remember what we we're talking about. Fuck. Oh, I said that they should take him out in a, oh, like a, yeah. in like a white Bronco with cops following him. That like, would be his... tight. <laughs> Just reliving the glory days. Yeah. And she said, okay, number one, that lady was from Joe. Oh, the, the shooter uh, in Florida during the eclipse. She says, of course, Pantera girl from Florida is like, no, hold on. She was not from Florida. She's from Georgia, okay? She was staying at a hotel in Florida. Two, she literally told the staff at the hotel that she was going on a shooting spree and still managed to get shots off. I mean, what do you got to do to, like, get flagged for stuff? Like, I I feel like there's always in these stories where it's like, they told so-and-so, and and then they did it, and it's like... Well, so I think the problem is is that, like, those tip lines probably filled... Oh, hundreds yeah. and hundreds of calls of just nonsense. Especially in Florida. You know? Can you imagine? Dude. Yeah. They're like, we have actual Florida man shit to deal with right now. We can't <laughs> get fucking some lady. Okay. Um, yeah. Pantera Girl also says, not the asshole. In fact, congratulations on such a sweet find. Good on HR for recognizing it was a personal issue. Nothing to do with their job until he was making an issue and then letting him go. Seller did it to himself. Sad that money turns uh, some people into such mean, nasty individuals. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because I also um, was talking about this with my brother. And we were like, I mean, he already looked it up to see how much it would. Like, he got the number, the $4,000 number from somewhere. He did yeah. some look up. He just didn't look up good enough to find out how much it was actually worth. And that's right. that's his fucking fault. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, and then Pantera Girl liked our ending last week, <laughs> our, our non-ending, and then Kylie, back in the in the mix, she says, oh my gosh, the voice changer thing is back, she really, <laughs> she really enjoys it, and then says, aw, you guys have matching haircuts, how cute, Ky- what? not really, I mean, yeah. my hair is infinitely longer than his, just because I can have it longer, but you know. 
I mean, in the fact that it's both short on the sides and slightly longer on the top, then yeah, it's the same exact haircut. <laughs> same exact, yeah. In which case, every girl that's got hair at the same length as another girl have also the same haircut. Cause those same. Are the same. Uh-huh. It's probably the same color, too. <laughs> <laughs> she says, <laughs> keep the Patreon people in the intro. So, I think she thought it was funny. Yeah. Thank my uh, thank the Lord my kids aren't picky eaters, but also an hour before watching this is when Ivan pooped in the yard like a dog. So that I forgot about that until she just said that her child literally she sent me a snap. <laughs> her son pooped in their yard. Oh wow, that's so awesome. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, dude, I just I just love it so much. Her kids always doing some crazy shit. Uh, she says, also, the show's not over until you tip your bartender. This ending was phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> and two comments from Lord Reverend Professor J. Lugnuts, the third Esquire. It says, hey, you guys can just say Professor Rusty instead of the whole name and stuff. And then Lord Reverend Professor J. <laughs> Rusty J. Lugnuts says, chocolate milk is definitely filling, but it depends on the manufacturer and percentage of milk used in my opinion i bet he's a professor of chocolate milk though right that's gotta be it <laughs> he definitely teaches chocolate milk 101 102 and 103 he's got that whole channel where he's he, that's all he talks about is chocolate milk right <laughs> oh yeah he does he has that podcast called the uh, chocolate milk syndicate <laughs> honestly I think he should. I think he should have that. <laughs> that sounds <Dude>. amazing. <laughs> I I would love, and you know, you know what's dumb is a podcast what? like that would take off too. That would be, people would be like, yes, this is the content that I've been yearning for. <laughs> so stupid. Are you ready, dude? I'm, well, now I have free time. I'm, it's gonna happen now. Yeah. Every That's episode, what... I'm gonna I'm gonna drink chocolate milk and talk about it. You know what you should do? That could be the, the Patreon exclusive episodes. <laughs> We're just paying this guy to drink chocolate milk? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you're just mad you didn't think of it. Um, anyway, so let's get into her. We got some interesting things. A couple quick, um, like, hey, uh, updates. That's, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I was going to do a thing where I'm like, hey, you remember that thing that we talked about? Uh, so, update uh, on the Rust Armorer, uh, the Rust movie that Alec Baldwin killed that lady in. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Armorer sentenced to 18 months in prison for involuntary manslaughter. So, Saw that guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um... I don't know how she got involuntary manslaughter. Maybe that's the only one that they could conclusively, like, agree on at the very least. Because, like, it was her fault. Like, she's in control of the weapons. <laughs> like, how do you fuck up and then get yeah. involuntary? You know what I mean? Well, I like, think obviously, it, I think, she didn't shoot him or her yeah. directly. Well, I think but it was like, because it was accidental. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean? Fair. That's fair. Because because there was, what's the word? Like, where, I mean, come on, Kylie, help me out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Negligence. Yeah. When there was negligence involved, it wasn't on purpose, but there was negligence involved. So a negligible manslaughter. homicide. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think negligible homicide is manslaughter. That makes sense. Also, we don't know any. This isn't legal advice. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't not at all. Take any. Yeah. For legal uh, reasons. That's a joke. Yeah. Second update on um, legal side of things. Also, another manslaughter thing. Remember the, uh, the, um, well, his name is G uh, James Crumbly. Uh, he, his son killed a bunch of people. I can't remember if it was a school or if it was what it was, but he was the parents that like were trying to flee to Canada. Remember that? No. Ah, man. I have a bad memory. I don't that's know why fair. you do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, well, I thought it was just so very specific where it was like, hey, this kid shot some people and then his parents were trying to, like, take him and run to Canada or something like that. Um, so the parents who bought the gun for him were arrested and they 
both have been found guilty of manslaughter in Michigan. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he killed four students in Oxford High School in that's in Michigan. So. Oh wow. Yeah. We. So. Anyway, I just I saw those and I was like, oh, that'll be a nice, uh, not a nice, a, a a good update for the show for since we talked about those things, but. Let's talk about some stuff happening in the now. Are you going to watch the Olympics at all? I didn't know it was coming up. It's, well, it's, it's uh, summer. Summer Olympics 2024. Paris, baby! Hopefully they have cornhole. I, yeah. I Well, <laughs> I know the French, and I think I do. They do love some cornhole. Um, there's been some interesting things, storylines that I've <laughs> seen. Number one... Is the uh, the United States Olympic team uniforms? And oh no! Yeah, dude. I'm just gonna show you, and then I'm gonna let you let you decide which how you feel about it. So these are them. All right. Can you see anything that could be a problem at all? I feel like I'm supposed to, but I. <laughs> I mean, maybe the females thing is a little. It's a little little high cut, right? A yeah. Uh huh. So, um, that's for like, <laughs> that's for the United States team. It's not like just for one event. They're like, hey, whoa, this is runners, you know, sprinters, <laughs> like doing all oh. sorts of shit with that, and um, some a long jumper, uh, Tara Davis Woodhall, cop uh, like posted a comment on the instagram post about it it says <laughs> she says wait my hoo-ha is gonna be out <laughs> <laughs> like that's what it look it looks like that's what's gonna happen There's yeah 100 like, percent. why like here's the thing why does the outfit for the females have to be so revealing and the dudes are just like shorts and a t-shirt yeah i don't i don't know because like it it just seems weird it seems like a weird thing it's in a like I don't know. This kind of happened a couple of years ago when they were like the uh, the beach volleyball Olympic like team was like, hey, can we just wear like shorts maybe? <laughs> you know, like, is that cool? And then everybody's like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, you want to you wanna not wear beach stuff on the beach? It's like, why are we making them wear <laughs> Let them be comfortable. They're athletes. Like, just let them wear yeah. whatever the fuck makes them feel like they can perform best in. Yeah. I don't know. It seems weird. Otherwise, let's just kick it back old school, make them all compete naked, you know, while we're at it. We might as well. I think it'd be more entertaining. I think that would, I think that would, I think it would hurt females. Oh, yeah. In which way? From, obviously, I don't know from experience, but I've heard that running with, with like, without like a sports bra on. Oh, shit. Can, yeah, can right. be very painful. Yeah. For chicks. All right. Fair enough. So at least. At least make them wear. At least let the girls wear sports bras. But everybody else, like everyone, everybody else naked. Just sports yeah. bras only, <laughs> so that no one gets hurt. So it, bottomless, it, at least. I think this uh, that would affect my next story that I found, which is <laughs> that NBC is going to be displaying the heart rates of the parents watching their kids during the Olympics, which seems maybe like a little too much stats going up, like. I think yeah. I think we can just see like a parent's reaction and be like, "Hey, they're happy for their I, kid." Why do I need to know what their heart rate is? That's that's a little un- invasive. Is that the word? I don't think it's invasive. I think it's just weird. Well, yeah. Okay. Like, but here's what's gonna happen, and I hope it doesn't. <laughs> Somebody's parents gonna fucking have a heart attack. Oh no! Can you imagine? That'd be terrible. That would be. It'd be kind of funny wild. after the fact. Yeah. In the but, moment, not so funny. Yeah, like Afterwards, three years hilarious. down the road. Like, hey, you remember that a week time? Later, a week later, it's going to be funny. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Look, like, you get you get a couple hours in this day and age. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Think about it. Like, whenever old, uh, Kobe, Kobe Bryant fucking smashed into the ground in the helicopter. Yeah. There were, I mean, I was, I did it too, but. That I didn't. I just. I stole that meme from somewhere else. There were memes already out about him yeah. dying. So I mean, you get a couple hours before the fucking trolls come out. I mean, yeah, you don't have to like 
be part of it, you know, though. <laughs> you, I mean, you, like, just because shitty people are going to make jokes, they've always made jokes right after things. It's just, yeah. if you want to dig that, <laughs> dig down to their level, that's that's your call. I don't, I mean, I like to give, like, a, unless the person's shitty, I like to give them, like, a week. Yeah, and, I, I saw, and, then, and I said a week. I said a week. <laughs> oh, all right. You right. were saying a couple years at first, like, oh, I'll forget about it by then. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, okay, so I picked this story strictly off of the headline. Okay. Because at no point during the headline did I know what was going to happen until the very end. So. Oh, no. <laughs> retired chiropractor. Okay. okay. On board so far. Yeah, I'm there. Killed Elvis. What? Impersonator. Okay. Oh, okay. By chloroforming him. Okay. More than once. <laughs> During sex. <laughs> what? <laughs> right? Get the f- Dude, what a roller coaster. <laughs> oh my god. I was started reading and I was like, oh shit, this guy killed Elvis? And then I was like, in person. What the fuck? Hold on. Wait. What? <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> and this guy's name is Ronald. Of course it is. Uh, he got accused of restraining and binding a guy named Thomas Kreider and then administering a dose, a dangerous dose. I feel like any dose is dangerous with chloroform, but it's fine. Uh, more than one time during the sexual encounter, which led to his death on the 5th of April in New Ooh. York. Yeah. Upstate New See? York. Manslaughter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, it's not a murder for sure, but yeah, it's just yeah. negligence. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Dude, I, I guarantee Kylie's gonna be all in the comments. This next is week his about face. This. So this is this. That's is the, the guy, guy who killed the other guy. Yeah. Doesn't he, he just like look he would, like the type? He he looks like he chloroformed me too hard. Yeah. <laughs> What's weird is you'd think <laughs> having been doing this for well, I don't know how a long he was doing it, but. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with think, the, uh, oh. the the chiropractic. I'm just saying he's old, so you you would have thought he would have done this once or twice by now. And but here's the maybe thing. know I, not to do that twice. <laughs> but I don't. I want to know why the chiro, retired chiropractor has anything to do with the rest of that story. It doesn't really. It's it, just. It, <laughs> I think it just is like instead of saying his name, they're like we have to give a a job description or something. I guess they could have said 69 year old man, but then everybody yeah. would have been like, <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it is fucking wild though. Like that, is... that was a wild ride that I was not ready for, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, also I found a story that kind of compounds the, your feeling towards, um, frivolous lawsuits. Okay. A Texas movie theater is being sued because their 24 ounce cup allegedly only holds 22 ounces. <laughs> so, you know, hey, they're scamming people by two ounces at a dot. Dude, if that's the case, why are we not suing the absolute fuck out of Subway? Yeah. That's they haven't a sold a foot long in ever. Yeah, because it's, what is it? It's like. It's like Ele- ten and a half inches. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I thought it was like eleven, but yeah, I remember yeah, seeing that where somebody was like, "Here's a tape measure, here's a subway sandwich," and it's bullshit. My whole life's a lie. Yeah, it's been like that for years. No one's gonna sue them, but you're gonna sue someone over two ounces. Yeah. Of liquid. Mm-hmm. Subway's big enough that they probably have like a disclaimer somewhere that just has been saving their ass, you know. Like, eh, it's about a foot, you know, like in an asterisk in the far right corner of like hidden in <laughs> it's written in light green, hidden in the dark green. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Fuck. like, Fuckers. All those like big companies always have some thing that makes them like Teflon when they're trying to get like somebody's like, oh, oh shit, here we go. You're about to get your ass suit off, son. And they're like, actually. Did you check the bottom right corner? And they're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I think the only company that ever got, f- like, really fucked, and deservedly so, was that old lady that got fucking burnt, like, by the the uh, coffee from McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah. yeah, that was wild. 
Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you fucked up. You should have put a sleeve. Like, uh, Starbucks well, is like, we've been putting sleeves on our cups for fucking decades, and you can't do it one time? Well, not even that, man. Like, why are you serving coffee to people that hot? Like, yeah, because it was, like, way hotter than it should have yeah. been, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, she got third-degree burns from it. Yeah. So, like, that's a different... Like, the sleeve... Sleeve or not, like... Yeah. You should not be serving coffee that fucking hot. Yeah. No one's drinking it that hot. They're like... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's insane. No. It's, anyway. Do you remember yeah. when that person allegedly found a finger in their chili at uh, Wendy's? Yeah, I do remember <laughs> that, that shit was wild. It was crazy. I didn't eat chili for like a long time after that. Even when like my mom would make it, I'm like, ah, there might be. I think I worked here. at Wendy's when that happened. <laughs> no, was it your finger? No, Show me your hands. I got it all of them. All right. All right, I'll get right. dressy this time. Um, <laughs> so I uh, here, yeah. So here's this one that uh, makes me feel like we're about to enter a space horror movie. Mutated strains of an unknown drug-resistant bacteria somehow got onto the International Space Station. So, just saying, alien is about to happen in real life, but. It's fine. It's great. <laughs> I also watched that um, movie Alive recently. Oh, yeah. You know, with Ryan Reynolds and all those other guys. Yeah. And I forgot that... Like, that movie's actually pretty decent. Um, it really Obviously, is. like, you put a space crew with a creepy alien and, like, it's always going to get compared to Alien, but it's like, okay, how many fucking hundreds of guy running around shooting people in the middle of New York street being chased by cops. Cause he just robbed a bank movies. Do we have, you know what I mean? Like yeah, <laughs> people forget that there's a bunch of every kind of movie, not just, you know, anyway. So I liked it. And I was like, I forgot how uncomfortable that made that movie made me feel. Cause I watched it when like first came out. I think I watched it, yeah. uh, in theaters too. And I just like, ugh. That goddamn alien's just real rude, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it first breaks that guy's hand, and then, then it's yeah. like just fucking everybody up after that. Like, and not even in just like a ah, killed you. Like it's like mutilating people. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's just real mean. Is the best way I can put it. <laughs> um, okay. He's rude. So, okay. So, so here's my last story, and it made me think of a different movie. <laughs> different different genre movie too maybe you'll be able to guess it dead man's body driven to bank and used to withdraw money and then two ohio women face charges they Is this fuck, weekend at bernie's yeah they fucking weekend at bernie's them that's so fucked up um also you gotta give it to them though that's a pretty clever way to do it i mean pretty gross but also not not a terrible plan I mean, they got caught, I mean, so it was, but... Yeah, I was going to say, not great. They got caught, yeah. but I like it. Points for originality. And the guy was 80, like, 80 years old, so they kind of did Weekend at Bird's... The only, the only problem is his name's Doug, so Weekend, weekend at Doug's. Doug's, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my vote for episode title. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's happening. <laughs> what were you... You told me before we started recording that you had something you were going to say. Uh, so, what was it? You wrote it down and Oh. Damn. Oh, yeah. No, it was just about the new... About the the UFL. Their oh. rule... Yeah, they have a rule for... The, towards the end of the game, instead of an onside kick, you, you get the ball fourth and 12. Oh. Yeah. That's and weird. you can, it's fourth and twelve, and like where? And you, uh, I don't, I don't know, like I don't know the line marker, but still, it's, I think it's, uh, it's just fourth and twelve though. And if yeah. you get, if you get a first down, you get to keep going. Yeah. And then you get, and if you want the ball again instead of an onside kick, you fourth and twelve it again. Yeah. So essentially, you can just keep the fucking ball. Yeah, as long as you can convert that twelve yarder. Yeah. Yeah. Which, granted. I know it's not easy, but yeah, it's not easy. And teams usually only have a select amount of plays that for that situation too. Like they're 
It's not like they have. It's not like a Madden where you can run the same play three times and it'll work three times, you know. But yeah, yeah. it is that is kind of a wild rule. Granted, the onside kick doesn't like isn't super successful. Like I don't know what the percentages are, but yeah, that is interesting. Um, yeah. From for my speech class, I'm well, I have to do a persuasive persuasive speech. And yeah. I chose to do mine on um, that, the, uh, like that the NFL should take yards after catch away from a quarterback's passing yard stats because <laughs> I feel like it would be pretty fun to talk about. They yeah. should. I I looked it up and I was um, found this write up that this guy did, and he was talking about the different like you know, really good runs within the last 15 years or so that he like calculated out the yards after catch for each yard or each year for, he did Tom Brady, he did Aaron Rodgers, And, um, it was kind of interesting because in Aaron Rodgers, um, Packers days, he yeah. was with, you know, Mike McCarthy was the coach yeah. And Mike McCarthy loves check down passes and he loves screen passes and that's just like his whole fucking offense, I feel like. And <laughs> fucking Aaron Rodgers in like 2011 threw for like 4,700 yards or something like that. Yeah. And if you count all of the yards after catch, those totaled up to like 2,700 yards. So it like yeah. fucking cuts it in half plus some. And I was like, God damn, that's crazy. Um, so I think that I think they should do that. I think it would be pretty fun, and you could grandfather everybody else in. Be like, all right, fine. You know, we don't want to make any like anybody cry, but from now on, from now on, yeah, <laughs> fucking get your shit together. Because it's like, hey man, you the quarterback didn't break those seven tackles. You know, the fucking yeah. yep. he threw out of a sack, and the guy who got all the yards luckily caught it, or whatever happened. You know, yeah, so. That was my two cents on here. Damn, I didn't know they got all those yards. I I literally I thought they got credit from obviously the 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 scrim like the line of scrimmage. Yeah. To where the ball was caught. I thought no, that's what they got credit for. They should that that would make sense. And I would say even just where the ball was thrown, not even line of scrimmage, because you could give them that. You could give them where because like sometimes a quarterback does scramble around and breaks a few tackles, whatever, and now he's. 10, 15 yards pa- be- or behind the line of scrimmage and yeah. makes a throw on the run, Patrick Mahomes or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you got to give him credit for that, but everything that a- happens after the receiver catches the ball, unless, like, unless you say, you know, he just bombs it 60 yards and he- the guy's wide open, it's like, all right, yeah, well, yeah. then that's just good play design. But I feel like you can, you can account for that but it, it is wild but the receiver does get all of the yards as well so maybe that's why they're like it's fair because the receiver gets it all it's like yeah he should he fucking did all the work <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he got open he got the ball he ran yeah. the rest of the way like yeah. so that's my two cents yeah. on that no you're right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. well so then do receivers get credit for the entire pass and what they run? Yeah, the receivers get all of the the same like the receiving yards are oh, yeah. the exact See, same as the passing yards and that's I think that's the only reason why they haven't changed it because they're like oh it's fair for everybody but like because well, yeah because if they're going to change it for the re- for the quarterback they should change it for the receiver too. The receiver should get from where they caught the ball to where they get to. Right. Yeah. Well, that yeah, so that's a different. That's the yards after catch. That's that. That's a separate stat, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Because they already count for that. Okay. The yeah. yak, right? Yeah, the yak. Yak. I also think <laughs> that receivers should get some sort of something if they're like if they just make a crazy catch that like like bro like yeah it's a highlight reel but also that's fucking crazy like you you're just calling that a catch no that was the catch dude (laughs) you know what i mean like yeah some calvin johnson shit where he's got two dudes covering him the whole time and he's like still walking away with it fuck you (laughs) yeah anyway yeah no you're right yeah 
All right. Uh, if you made it this far in the show, we appreciate you. Uh, stop and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Wherever you're at, follow us. Hit the buttons. Uh, leave us comments. As you heard, Levi, I'll read them out at the beginning of every episode. Yeah. Check out our link tree. Uh, check out our store in the link tree. Levi designs everything. He's an okay artist. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to make some new stuff for this show. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to um, keep guilt tripping me about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. Am I the asshole for breaking a patient's confidentiality to tell my friend that her boyfriend is HIV positive? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, this has been eating HIPAA! Me- <laughs> this has been eating me up inside for the past week, so I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to lay it all out there. One of my closest friends, Amanda, started dating a guy named Matt about two months ago. I met him twice before, and he seemed pretty seedy to me. But she was happy, so overall, I was happy for them. I work at our local hospital. I won't divulge too much about my role, but I am not involved in providing medical care, i.e. I'm not a physician or a nurse. But I do have access to patient records and am permitted to look through them under certain circumstances with ethics approval. I came across Matt's charts just over a week ago. I was not snooping. I was explicitly gathering patient information for an approved task, and he was one of the patients in the pile of charts. It's not too much of a coincidence. I was going through 500 patient records, and this one just happened. And this is one of the nearby re- hospitals. I almost said restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those restaurants where we have patients. <laughs> <laughs> um, I discovered that Matt was HIV positive from his chart. I was unsure whether Amanda was aware. I wrestled with this in my in many different directions. Should I mind my own business and not violate confidentiality, or risk her contracting the disease? And risk her contracting the disease? Should I approach him first, even though it's not my place? And we've only met twice. Or should I go straight to her just to confirm that she knows? Mm. Ultimately, I felt an obligation to her as, as my friend and to her well-being. So I told her, knowing her, I felt like she was unaware since she's generally extremely risk-averse and something seemed off about this guy. So I felt like approaching him might not accomplish anything. She was shocked to find out about his HIV status and broke up with him. Damn. Amanda was thankful to me, but evidently she let him know how she found out ah. as I was as I was let go from my position two days ago. I understand the risk I was taking, and I was hoping it was a calculated risk, but now I'm wondering if I overstepped by breaking confidentiality. Am I the asshole? Edit. To be clear, confidentiality isn't something I take lightly. In my eight years in this position, I have never once broken confidentiality. This is something I really wrestled with internally before deciding to come forward to Amanda. Wow. I don't. So th- there's no comments. They've been like... I have to like click on the original post. Yeah. But... I don't think that she's the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, especially since she, like, willfully, like, took the risk and, like, accepted the punishment, too. Like, you're you're fine with what you did because you thought you, what you were doing was right. And, yeah, the company or the, the hospital didn't agree, but, like, that is your friend. I feel like while you were reading that, I was trying to think of, like, uh, more cautious way to do it than just outright going hey your boyfriend has hiv and this is how i found out i would have been like hey i would you know hey uh, i was talking to some of the doctors and they recommended uh for me we're the same age and they recommended for me that i should get a battery of tests because of a lot of you know things going around or whatever (laughs) just like trying to you know trying to be sneaky about it but i understand why she didn't like it's you know, it is her friend just to kind of go up and be like, hey. She could have been real crazy with it and then found like an ex of his and found her name oh. and then been like, hey, I know his ex. His ex told me this. Oh, yeah. That would, that be would have been better. Slightly crazier, but she would yeah. have lost her job. That's a good point. She also could have um, had one of the doctors she works with. Maybe that's her friend's doctor and been like, hey really think you should recommend she gets a blood test done <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or well i guess she wouldn't have aids though or <laughs> hiv never mind never mind also i feel like like yeah that guy definitely should have been told like should have told her that but that sh- i don't know i like obviously him withholding that's a little sketch or super sketch but you can also just live with that now. Like, people live with that shit now. It's not, not yeah, 1986 anymore. I don't I mean, think that's something I, I you don't, to keep. Yeah. 
I, I don't think that's something you get to keep secret. No, you, he like, definitely should have told her. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, especially if they that, were fucking. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Though. Even if they hadn't had sex yet, when you start dating someone, you know that's like that's that's in the path. Like yeah. you know what I mean. Like even if it hasn't happened yet, like you gotta start. You're like, all right, yeah. cool. We're dating. It's coming down the. Pipe, we're serious. Yeah. yeah. You know, like that. That's coming. So maybe, maybe he planned on telling her. Maybe they hadn't had sex yet. I just I don't know. So it's like 41. percent She's the asshole. But I I just don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't give a fuck wild. about. I don't give a fuck about the law. Like, if me, like me and you are, I'm just saying, if me, me and yeah, you are best no, friends, right? It, yeah. And I'm like fucking at medical, and I somehow come across the girl you're seeing, and she, it says she has HIV. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna 100. I'm 100 gonna tell you, like, yo, dude, yeah. you should. She has AIDS, or yeah. she has HIV, whatever. She has yeah. HIV. You should fucking ask her. If you don't know this, she should have fucking told you. Yeah. Like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I don't think that she's an asshole. I do understand why it's like a murky water situation where it's like, yeah, this is like confidentiality, but like that's, I would say, not for the situation it was used in. It's maybe yeah. for like discrimination of like getting people fired from jobs or like, um, you know, shit like that where it's like, okay, well you are treating me different because I have this yeah. instead of I'm just trying to warn my friend <laughs> like I don't know I, I understand the law or I don't understand the law I guess but I understand why it's there yeah. and I don't think that this situation is really like what they were envisioning <laughs> when they created it it was more like hey we don't want uh, people's information getting out there because other people don't need to know for this and this reason and that is his responsibility to tell people instead of you know them just finding out the long way i don't know yeah I, no i i kind of feel like yeah it's not it's definitely not on like the level where it, it should be like on the internet like the child predator lists but i think i think there should be kind of uh like hey you need to tell people because if you give somebody willingly you give somebody something like that like you can i'm pretty sure you can get like charged with something i can't remember what it I is i think you can too yeah yeah like i don't know the exact thing, but I, yeah come on kylie help us out yeah kylie we're, we need your legal help and mark also <laughs> probably <laughs> we have medical questions <laughs> we need the experts where are they <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah Anyway, I agree. Not the asshole, but... Yeah, not the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank our friends, the... Oh, man, the Macabre Emporium. Yep. Yes. There we go. Real creature feature. Let's yep. go. Uh, Society of Cryptid Hunters. These go. names are really fucking my brain up. <laughs> They're very interesting. The, remedi like the Remedial very... Scholar. Yeah. I think that's it. Those yeah, four. I think it is nice yeah, yeah those we'd like to thank those people <laughs> yeah check and them out check them out do all the things uh and that's it right that's it i've had enough peace out bitches i can't breathe underwater <laughs>